Welcome to Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky. Our hope is that you will be encouraged and equipped through this podcast as we have conversations with friends from around the world. You can subscribe to our podcast and go to our website, firebornministries.com, and sign up for our email list to stay up to date on Fireborn Ministries. And may you have your own adventures in the spirit. And now we hope you enjoy today's podcast much for coming into Adventures in the Spirit. I'm your host, Jared Lasky. I want to encourage you guys. Hey, I'm currently in Hawaii at the School of Digital Film at Youth with the Mission Kona, uh, but I'm excited for what the Holy Spirit is doing in you. And guys, we're excited for 2022. 2022 is coming right up, and we've got a lot of webinars and seminars lining up and, and things for Adventures in the Spirit. But before uh, I jump into uh, what Fireborn has to offer or anything like that, Thank you so much for being a subscriber. Thank you so much for listening in. And thank you so much for sharing our podcast episodes and for being activated. Uh, Please feel free to click on the link that I provide in the description and the podcast notes to get your free download. Uh, We've got free downloads on how to study the Bible with the aid of the Holy Spirit. We've got a free download on how to hear God and prophesy. And we've got another free download about uh, the end times and what that really means. But guys, I'm so excited for my guest today. I've got Katie Hester, who is a sound receiver. She's a prophetic minister. She's a creative. She's a music teacher. And we'll, she'll be sharing today her story of her calling into uh, healing and healing frequencies and what that is. But you know what? Her heart is for Jesus. So please help me welcome Katie Hester to Adventures in the Spirit. Katie, welcome. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> so. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you on, Katie. I'd, <laughs> I'd love to know um, your story as to how God, you know, how, how you came to Christ and then how he called you into what you're doing now. Well, <laughs> I laugh about that. It's been a while. Um, so I, I came to Christ around age 20 and um that that would be a long story but let's just say i was going along in life and i really didn't know much about the bible um i had excellent parents that they really they tried to support um the fact that i love music and everything but um let's say i came into a further knowledge of the bible which i didn't have much (laughs) at age 20 and i had an awesome uh friend of mine um you know just introduced me to the bible and i had my story there became a Christian. And, um, you know, we go from glory to glory, uh, when we are in Christ. So, so once we're born again, we, we, uh, accept, you know, his, his fullness in our life. He kind of does the rest. (laughs) So I'm laughing because my story is like, I had a lot of years probably where I thought I was doing the rest (laughs) you know. and I have now been humbled and found out that he does it. And um, it's just been glory to glory. You know, uh, my background is just like I was a musician. Like I said, my parents were excellent in that they supported what I loved. They didn't force me. I didn't grow up in a particularly musical family, believe it or not. (laughs) So I lived kind of on the other side of town and and they would kind of um, do what they could to get me support, uh, whether financially or driving me or or allowing me to play flute when I sounded bad as a 10 year old. (laughs) And just give me lessons and getting all that classical training. And when I became Christian, I actually didn't even um, write music for probably the first seven, eight years or so. And I was a trained band instructor, played in 20, 30 orchestras and all this stuff. And I started playing other instruments. And then um, I always thought it would be cool to write music. And I know God plants the desires in our hearts. So I thought, you know, that'd be really neat if I could do that. But I wasn't really actually doing that. And then... um, just slowly but surely, you know, I just, he just started uh, giving me one experience after another, one season after another of training on this instrument, and then starting to mess around with some sounds, and then just really finding the covenant of peace within writing music, and, and that's what happened to me, is that the covenant of peace that's spoken about in Isaiah, I would, I would do this and not really understand what I'm doing, and then um, as I progressed I just really would learn to reside in that 
peaceful place that he gives us because his sheep know his voice and I just happen to speak music. I love <laughs> so, it. You know, I speak English and music. <laughs> so I love it. So uh, how does the Holy Spirit work? You're, you're mentioning entering into that place of rest and things. So uh, I know that the Holy Spirit, you know, he does, he, he's all, always working. He works in incredible ways. Uh, mm-hmm. But for for me, sometimes there's these significant markers, if you will, that I understand that he's he's with me. He's inspired me to say right. Uh, so I'll write like I'll get an idea. I'll, I'll get a thought. But then I feel kind of like a restful, like you'd mentioned, the restful presence of the Holy Spirit. I, I could feel it like almost on my shoulders. And then mm-hmm. then I just kind of know it's time for me to write. And then I'll, I'll start writing. I'll start typing. And then it'll lift even if I'm not done. Like I could feel, you know, that just that that kind of lifts. So I could go, you know, say, get another cup of coffee. I get whatever, you know, wait a few days, but then I feel the Holy spirit again. And then it's like, I got to go back to writing. And then eventually the project is done. And once I'm done, it's like, Hey, that's, that's that, you know? Um, But how does it work? How does he work with you when it comes to music or even writing music or singing? Yeah, probably similar. Um, I always, I, I say the scripture all the time. The Bible says his sheep know his voice. Okay, and people function, you know, in different ways. As an educator, I know that some people are physical learners. Some people are, um, you know, there's even, you know, reading. They're better at reading than than feeling, or they're better at seeing, or they're better at touching. Well, same thing, you know, in our experience with the Lord, He speaks to us in different ways. But I would say that there is a knowing. Okay, I probably have very similar experiences. You, I. <laughs> I have a set of antennas on me, you know, and, uh, you know, I can, I can feel it. Oftentimes I can physically feel it. And what I would go back to is the kingdom of God is uh, righteousness, peace, and joy. Okay. So, so I, I definitely, it's funny because I haven't thought about this for a while because now I'm at where I'm at, but let's say as a creative person, and you can probably relate to this because um, my husband and I are actually, we're both very creative. And uh, we've definitely, we've been on a huge journey of like, not every project, not everything you create is necessarily witnessed by the Holy Spirit, just because you can doesn't mean you should, you know, everything's permissible, not beneficial. And so it's just been a journey of like testing, testing the waters. I mean, and and I'm getting more and more receptive, more and more in tune, you know, to where, you know, when I first started doing this, like, let's say I would be just playing an instrument um, on on a stage somewhere for worship or whatever. I would literally hear like a a pin drop, like, play this note. And uh, even as I say it, there's a deep piece as I'm saying this. So I think this is what I mean. There's a deep piece. I would hear it now. As, as a music teacher, I'm an expert in music theory. I love it. I could go on and on about numbers and sequences and, and things like that. I love music theory. And I would know in my intellectual mind, that note doesn't fit. Hmm. <laughs> and it would get more and more daring. And it'd be like, really? I should play that in that way right now. And as I did, I would jump in and it's like jumping in this river. I, I jump in and, and it starts with an obedience. I jump in. And the same thing with recording and everything. Sometimes I start things and I'm like, hmm, I can feel the striving of the flesh. And I, you know, I'm, I'm getting better about walking away a little faster and not trying to create just because I can. But I, I would feel it and I would jump in and it would just be like, hmm, going like this, you know, to where eventually it was exactly that covenant of peace, which is funny because the one of the pivotal um, ministries that planted in me along the way there's been many but one of the pivotal ministries at the time they don't even exist anymore but at the time they were called covenant of peace <laughs> and uh they they deposited that in me it was a church full of musicians <laughs> so but um yeah it's just it's a it's a deep peace and a deep knowing a deep knowing like i i can't even take credit for it or explain it even as i'm talking right now i i feel it i'm like oh, it's so all good. him it's him it's so good. And, and then as a musician, you've discovered, uh, and I've had, had one other guest on this podcast before talking about frequencies, about, uh, you know, we, we went, obviously went deeper into, hey, this is worship, this is soaking, but uh, can you expand on 
uh, healing music or how God can heal through music. Uh, this is your specialty. So um, yeah. can you share with us what, how God opened that world at that realm of revelation to you? Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's a wide question. But what I can tell you is that I had um, an experience, really, where <clears throat> literally as a music teacher, I, I, this is literally what happened. <laughs> I had somebody call me one day and say, and they, they happen to be charismatic uh, believers. <laughs> like, we were praying and their daughter was like really sick and they were um, uh, just had received a word. Uh, a prophetic word that music was going to be a huge part of this little girl's healing. And I, not too long into working with them, they, they sent me this literature. They're like, Hey, have you heard of this? You know? And, and actually um, I was not very healthy at the time and I was having trouble focusing and reading and the Lord just did a number on me. I started reading this literature and I mean, I read more than I had read in years, like in one shot in a couple of hours, I just knew I was supposed to do it. It was amazing at that time, um, several years ago. And uh, I learned about the healing frequencies. So, you know, really what healing frequencies are is like a different tuning. You know, that's it's, it's not some weird far off thing. I literally just tune my instrument differently. Everything in the world is made of vibrations. And as I tune them there, they have certain vibrations carry certain healing properties. Okay. So, you know, what I would say is I was actually receiving this, this music before that and before it, you know, and we can be playing in different groups that don't turn tune like this. And because they are worshiping um, by the spirit, you still are, you're still ministered to, you know what I mean? But the thing is, is when you do this, it's, it's, it's more clear. I, I believe it, it carries more weight. It carries more weight. There's there's just a clarity in tuning uh, what I tune to, which is 444. And some people call it the key of David. Um, but you know, as I started working on it, it just it just floored me. <laughs> I laughed in the last interview I had. I literally I would play at the piano for a couple hours once I had it tuned this way. And I would get up and be like a limp jellyfish. I I just both, you know, my soul and my body physically felt it so deeply. And I, I actually literally trashed a lot of my old recordings, redid everything. Wow. So, well, you mentioned 444. So that's 444 mm -hmm. hertz. So yeah. um, I spent time in the Marine Corps. I was a radio operator. So I worked with frequencies, yeah. uh, lots of frequencies, governmental ones, you know, um, learned a lot of things about all that. And mm -hmm. um, this might be controversial. What some people don't know is that there are frequencies that um, Hitler used to mm -hmm. brainwash an entire population, specifically made frequencies and put it in music in order to, you know, uh, do what he did. And that was evil, pure evil. Uh -huh. So if the devil could do that, how much more can God do? I mean, obviously God is, why am I even comparing that? I can't compare the two. Yeah. But can you expand on the, 444 hertz uh, for our audience. Uh, you mentioned Key of David. Now, this is something I've never, I've never heard it called that, but I, I've just kind of been aware of, of what you're talking about. But can you elaborate on that for us? Yeah, I mean, I can elaborate in general. Um, a lot of my walk in the Lord has been um, kind of like God being like, here, Katie, here's this. Start walking in it. Okay. So I would, I would say that I'm not a scientific expert. I'm not an expert on frequencies. I know the journey that I had and his sheep know his voice. And I knew that I was to align myself in this. Okay. Um, I can say that 444 has certain healing properties for, for your soul and for your, um, uh, for your, you know, just your mind, your body, your emotions. There's different things, just different organs and things like that that are going to function better in healing frequencies. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of laughing, not laughing at the whole Hitler thing, but I'm laughing in the sense that this is what I say when we do really awful things like that, because it is awful. It's, it's absolutely horrible. But the bottom line is Jesus won. That's he right. won. He won. And, you know, it, it's kind of like the law versus new covenant. The new, you know, the law still had some glory. The co new covenant has a greater glory. Right. And so, 
you know, I just, I just feel like it can't compare. There's always some kind of huge counterfeit out there, especially in music because it's so powerful, you know, and, and I, you know, I'm, I apologize that I can't really fill in more, but I, you know, on the other hand, I don't apologize for that break by the spirit. And, you know, I haven't felt led to kind of master that area. Um, I really just have to continue obeying and continue writing the music and continue going forth with the, the message of love that the music that I write has, Amen. you know? So what have you seen God do through, through your music? What are some testimonies you could share? Yeah. <laughs> the first one's always me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, uh, you know, somebody that's, I've really been being delivered from striving, from legalism, from things like that. And a long way into it, uh, after writing for several years, I realized God's writing about his love every single time. <laughs> Maybe I should listen <laughs> you know, <laughs> to the message. But I will say that, um, you know, there's been several people that I will, it, it's like a knowing, like a sheep knows voice, okay? So it's a prophetic knowing. And that term, term can seem so scary to people who don't understand the word prophetic, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But um, I don't mean anything scary by it. I just mean like, like a Holy Spirit God witnessing within me. He will pinpoint um, different people and different songs, okay? So uh, one time recently I shared one with somebody that had had several uh, very close losses in the family. And I was just listening to it for myself, <laughs> you know, and this person came to mind, like I just saw an image of their face and I went and uh, just texted her real quick. Hey, listen to this song. And it, basically she came back to me like the next week and said, that changed my whole day. I played it for my coworker, you know, things like that. There's, there's other times um, when I'm playing, I don't know how to explain it other than it is so, um, deep and accurate of a knowing I will play a certain thing or sometimes have certain words associated with certain things. And it really just breaks the bonds off of people. It allows them a space to receive his love and, and just to receive. It's so pure. It's so pure. His love is so pure. There's nothing wrong with it. And we live in a world where there's something wrong with everything, <laughs> you know, <laughs> And there is nothing wrong with the goodness of God. And so as I, as I give those to people, you know, a lot of people feel like um, super relaxed, you know, and, and even in some of the other stuff, just really joyful. You know, there's some jazzy things. I've got some more jazzy projects coming up. I've got some singer songwriter product uh, projects coming up. Um, some of the lyrics are just, they're just from the Lord. You know, I'm not even a writing person. <laughs> <laughs> and I write them and I, and I title them and, you know, they're, they're just pinpointed, you know? Awesome. So it's, I, I would say that it's more of a, um, a disarming, you know, there, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of healing that goes forth through it, you know, whether it's love, peace, or joy. Cause that's, that's my qualifier for breakthrough music today. It's got to all be about love, peace, and joy. What, regardless of the style that I put out there or the person, if I work with another artist or anything like that, it has to have love, peace, and joy. And those are the testimonies that I then receive from it is, is that exact experience, just bringing us back to that purity of God's love. So, so good. Just always bringing it back to God's love. I love that. That's so good. It's, it's, a, it's a picture of beauty. You know, it's a picture of beauty and beauty is needed in this world. So. Yeah, that's so good. So uh, what is your heart to what you're calling breakthrough music? What do you want to see? I mean, say there, there are Christians and even non-Christians who listen to this podcast. Um, what would you like to say to them about breakthrough music or, hey, if they've never uh, spent the time listening to it? What, what would you like to encourage them to be like, hey, jump in, jump in with me? Yeah. So, so just real quick, it's Breakthrough Music Today. Okay. It's not break, just Breakthrough Music. It's called Breakthrough Music Today. So if you, you type that into any of the major um, streaming sites or, or whatever, you have to work, put the word today in there. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I put on the description of it is to change your atmosphere. 
Okay. And like I said, it's love, peace, and joy. So what I really want to see people do is just listen to it in order to change their atmosphere. Okay. If you think about our world, it's flooded, it's flooded with negativity and it makes me sad. (laughs) And it's just God's love always aligns us with the best us. There's so much healing or joy, or maybe you just kind of want to get rid of that negative vibe. If you just put it on, sometimes I will literally listen for hours and just, you know, or, or listen to it as we sleep or, or just to change the atmosphere in my home or where, wherever, I mean, you can have a, a haircut place and listen to it, you know, over, over time. And, and it really can just draw people to the Lord. I really feel that it carries a lot of weight in that because it is pure. It's, it's not even me. You know what I mean? It, 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 I collaborate with it, but you know, that's what I want to see people do. It's, it's just, <clears throat> listen and be drawn to God's love. You know, one thing they can do is look at the titles. If you look at it, particularly for the instrumental, if, there, if there's words and things like that, obviously it's a little more, the message is a little more upfront. But if you read the titles, um, you know, some of the titles that I have out there are like, I'm just uh, thinking about one of them's called Streams of Living Grace. If you listen to it and envision that picture, another one that I really love is called um, My River. <laughs> and it's just, you know, it just brings you in, into that river of God's goodness, his goodness, because he's a good father. He's a, he's a good God for people who don't know him. That's my, that's my message. He's good. He loves, he heals, he provides. He, he's amazing. <laughs> he's amazing. And I just want people to know his goodness that it's, it's not any deeper. I feel like I'm giving a lot of words for something that's so simple, you know? Katie, thank you so much again. Um, yeah, this was a very special. I, I love this. I could feel the rest in the, the sense. And, and, you know, today I, I got to go like right after this, I have to go help shoot a movie, you know, so, but mm-hmm. just this conversation, I'm at peace. I mean, yeah. at, the, at the beginning, I'm like, you know, already up working on things and then, you know, feeling a little rushed, but just through this conversation, I've got the peace and the rest of God which I'm going to take with me for the, all, of, all of today into the set. I'm, I'm in the same place, Jared. You know, <laughs> I'm a wife, a mom. I have a business. I've got some errands to run before my son's off school. <laughs> you know, all of that. And as I started talking about it, I almost felt like the Lord was like, stop. Mm. <laughs> you know, just stop for a minute and breathe. You know, so. Can you pray for us? Pray for our listeners? Absolutely. Jesus, we just thank you so much, God. You are so stinking good. (laughs) You're so stinking good. You're okay with me saying stinking. (laughs) So thank you, Jesus, so much. I just um, just bring forth your peace, uh, your justice. I'm hearing the word justice for some reason. Uh, There's something about that for somebody. Um, Thank you for bringing forth your Holy Spirit witness your witness and and your flood and your river and the baptism of the Holy Spirit for all who are listening, just a refreshing. And I just thank you, Lord, for for those who are going to listen and get a taste of your goodness, even in this snippet of an interview. I thank you for blessing Jared's project um, that you have given him to do. And um, we just thank you that it's done and that you won. That Jesus won. It's okay. There's peace today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Katie, thank you so much for being on Adventures in the Spirit. What is the best way for people to get a hold of you or uh, your music? Well, I have a website, BreakthroughMusicToday.com. And that has a whole bunch of just, you know, four or five links of the major sites like Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, all of that. But basically, you can also just go to those sites, whatever you use. Like if you use Amazon then just type in breakthrough music today. (laughs) Okay. Um, I did rename it not too long ago. If you have any trouble, just add my name in there. Katie Hester. Okay. So it is in the process of of kind of consolidating. I think it's all done, but it's a little bit out of my hands. So um, for the most part, if you look at breakthrough music today, and then if you need to type my name and you will see um, there are actually 11 albums. So, and there's many on the way. 
Uh, many, <laughs> many. <laughs> I've got about 10 albums in my head and four or five I'm in process on and just um, praying about the direction for that. But Breakthrough Music Today is the way to look it up. Awesome. I want to thank everybody for listening in, joining in, even viewing this uh, on YouTube and Facebook. And I want to give a big shout out to everybody in Pakistan overseas who, who watched this as well. Don't forget to share this podcast and subscribe to Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky. Thank you so much for listening to our conversation in Adventures in the Spirit. We hope that this podcast encouraged and inspired you to press into Jesus and launches you into your own adventure. You can stay up to date with Fireborn Ministries by going to our website, firebornministries.com, and like us on Facebook. And may you have your own Adventures in the Spirit.